Um, but again, they're better than anyone thought that they would be. This is a difficult league to be consistently good in, which is why a 15-game winning streak, whether it be measured against the glory days of the Niners or not, is so impressive. Consistency is the hardest thing to sustain in this league, and I don't just mean consistency year over year. I'm talking about a four-quarter game. As good as the Niners have been, Last night was their first four-quarter game where they beat the brakes off the Cowboys in each and every single quarter. Um, they were they, they were dominant. Cowboys had as many passing yards as they did turnovers in the first quarter last night. Wow. Wow. So that that's a that that that's a really nice way to start a game. Dallas opened with three straight three no excuse me four straight three and outs the 49ers had generated nine first downs had forced a fumble had sacked Dak twice and had scored 14 points surviving their own goal line fumble before the Cowboys even earned a single first down last night Cowboys were held under 100 yards in the first half and that's the first time this season that they were held under 100 yards in any half. And then they come back to just go over about 100 yards in the second half. The Niners whooped their ass last night. Not only did the Niners score 42, the Niners didn't have a single receiver with even 70 receiving yards. They spread it around. Kittle, Ayuk, Debo, McCaffrey, Husechek, Jawan Jennings. I mean... They spread the ball around last night. Uh, Ayuk had the most targets with seven, but, I mean, they didn't have a 75-yard receiver, and they scored 42 points. They didn't have a 75-yard rusher. They scored 42 points. I mean, it wasn't like it was an all-timer from McCaffrey. He had 19 carries for 51 yards. He averaged 2.7 a carry. Right. And, and, what, and uh, it wasn't a great vintage performance from CMC, and they still won by 32. Right. And, and oh, by the way, when we're counting all the different streaks that you can enjoy right now, his consecutive games with a touchdown streak, you can keep that one going. I mean, there are so many streaks to appreciate and count right now. But uh, before we how get about the Niner, how about the Niner O line, Damon, that was supposed to, supposed to get their you know what handed to them? Yeah. Uh, they gave up a total of one sack. And two hits on the quarterback. Was was Micah Parsons on the field? Didn't see him. He got shut out. There were three he, things that the 49ers needed to do to find a win last night, and they did all three. They did all three in overwhelming fashion. They need to quiet C.D. Lamb from having a big game. And Isaiah Oliver played really well. We need to get to him and Deamador yeah. Lenore and what they did against him in the slot. The biggest play that C.D. Lamb made last night came against Mooney, who uh, – who, who, who had a, a really good game himself. Um, they needed to make sure Tony Pollard didn't go off. Tony Pollard never got right, not for a minute in that game. And they needed to make sure that Micah Parsons didn't have one of those, you felt him all night long football games, and you could hardly see him last night. So the Niners had three main weapons to shut down and they went about shutting those three weapons down, leaving Dak with very little resources around him to do anything with. So it was overwhelming. But where I want to go here and just spend a little bit of time, because I just don't think that we had spent enough time appreciating what we're seeing, is the evolution now of Brock Purdy. We've seen so little of Brock, it's hard to talk about his evolution. But the truth is, it, it would have been ridiculous to have assumed that his starting point of this year would have been much better than picked up where he had left off. He was denied an off-season of development because it was an off-season of surgical rehab, which is a totally different animal than how do I get better? How do I take the year that I had, package it into the off-season I need to get ready for the year that is coming? Brock hit a pause because of that elbow surgery and further development, and he's just trying to rehab. So starting this year, in the realm of looks like last year, would have been a really good starting point. But that's not what's happened. He's way this better. Is, this is a significant, it's not even a step forward, Larry. It's a leap forward. Brock Purdy has taken a leap in year two, without a normal offseason 
in a way that's usually greater than a leap a player takes in year three or four in this league. So we're looking at just a smart guy who gets it and just everything that Kyle Shanahan puts down, Brock Purdy's picking up. There's just no other way to say it. He is, this is the, this is what happens when a coach meets the player who gets it. And that's why the Niners are so dangerous right now. All of this talent everywhere and a facilitator who gets it, gets it all, gets it conceptually, gets it physically, and they're dangerous. The the one take that was the worst take of the offseason, and I saw it many, many, many nights in chats this offseason is, um, he's topped out. You know, he, he, the league will adjust to him. He's going to get worse next year. That was based in what? Other than, other than, hey, man, I really want Trey Lance to be the guy, and I'm rooting hard, and I've got a YouTube channel. There was nothing logical about Brock Purdy, 23-year-old quarterback, would be worse in year two in Kyle Shanahan's system. Matt Ryan was good in year one. In year two in this system, he won the MVP. You know, I mean, you get better in a complex system. I asked Brock what I thought was the ultimate question in May at the minicamp. I said, Brock, where are you today? Compare compare where you're at today within this system to where you were last year at this time. And he's like, oh, Krug, night and day. He's like, last year at this time, I was literally walking to the line of scrimmage just trying to remember, the be able to spit out the play and just try to remember what play it was. This year, I've I've operated the system over and over and over again. We've prepped for multiple playoff games. I know it like the back of my hand. I've committed it to memory. I know every play. I know every formation. You know, I, I know my my knowledge base is night and day. And yet, even though he said that, nobody nobody believed it. And now here we are, year two. His quarterback rating in week one against the Steelers on the road. 111.3. Then against the Rams, 93.1. Then against the Giants, 111.3. Last week against Arizona, 134.6. Last night against Dallas, 144.4. He's completing 72% of his passes. He's got nine touchdowns. He's yet to throw an interception. The team that he's quarterbacking is undefeated and is averaging close to 35 points a game. I remember you trying to pivot off. Because look, as I said earlier, it took no talent at all to underestimate Brock Purdy. You were right and you were justified in looking at him, his starting point, and saying, well, this probably isn't going to work. But then some of the data that's being returned to you, you need to start factoring into your evaluation of the guy. And I remember one of your... I thought really good off-season talking points was, well, let's take our eye off the ceiling and just look at the floor. And Brock Purdy's floor is probably higher than Trey Lance's ceiling, to be completely honest with you. I mean, it's really not about Trey Lance. I was hated. I was always uncomfortable talking about these guys in comparison because I Trey Lance is Trey Lance. He is... An enormous talent, great kid, hard worker with several of the traits that it takes to be a great quarterback. But he played one year of college football since high school, and it, his day is coming, man. But it ain't today, and it wasn't going to be by week one. Well, and it's look, like if, it was so if, obvious if, that it wasn't going to be week one. But it's that, coming. If, Don't if let's not slip. Let's not act like Trey Lance is is some bum. He's not. Trey Lance is going to be a – I agree with Trent Williams, who doubled down this week and said that he thinks someday Trey's going to be very, very good. Trent is smart. Trent knows ball. I know ball. This Tr- Trey Lance is a franchise quarterback. He's just not a franchise quarterback today. He is going to make it, and he's going to be very good. I really firmly believe that. But this idea that he was more ready to play than Brock Purdy was asinine. It was crazy talk. And the people that couldn't see the different stages of development, I got to wonder. It's like, were you just hoping? Do you you just kind of hope that the player that you're watching is going to be good? 
because that sounds like what the plan was. We're just hope that he'll be good. It's like he's going to be good, but it's going to take reps, lots of reps. Um, what Brock does throwing with anticipation, Trey doesn't do virtually at all. But guess what? He eventually will because it's not, this is not NASA. You know, he's going to figure it out. There's limited factors. Um, it's going to take some time. But three years from now, Trey Lance is going to be a very good NFL quarterback. I think everybody just needs to put their arms around that. You know, you want to, uh, you know, understand that Brock's great. Understand that. But also understand that Trey has all of the traits to be great. He just needs the mental reps and the physical reps. Brock played all his freshman year at Iowa State. He played his sophomore year. He played it. This guy played, and he had 47 career starts. And then you're seeing the product of that of that experience right now. Trey's going to get there. It's just going to take. It's going to be 2025. It's going to be 2026. I mean, I absolutely am just very, very confident that Trey's going to be a very good quarterback, um, but it's just not going to be right now. If you're just joining us, welcome. It's great to see you here on 49ers Wake Up, brought to you by Palmetto Superfoods, delicious acai bowls just with your name on it with our promo code you get 15 percent off dblk15 scan the qr code if larry puts it up uh he will in just a moment he's looking for it i can feel it uh this is an absolutely delicious nutritious great way to start your day to end your night use this as your breakfast use this as your lunch mix in a healthy meal around all the crap that we eat make this your next healthy choice and you will return not because it's a healthy choice but because it's delicious it's satisfying it's filling go ahead check out palmetto superfoods all around the bay area that's the promo code that's the qr code you know what you need to do audience so do it thank